Hi everyone, this video is going to look at three more organic reaction types that you just got to memorize. And these are reactions where it's very easy to remember what you start with and what you end with. There are three sort of processes that help us create uh, materials that we need on our, for our everyday lives. So the first uh, organic reaction type that we'll talk about in this video is combustion. And combustion should be a familiar process to you because this is just burning stuff. Um, and whenever we burn stuff, we always create the same products. You'll always, always, always be able to recognize a combustion reaction by three different things. Number one, you always need oxygen to be able to burn something. Number two, you will always create the exact same two products, no matter what, carbon dioxide and water. And you may sort of think to yourself, well, like burning is kind of a messy, smelly process. There's all that smoke and pollution and junk. Well, yes, combustion reactions don't always proceed perfectly because there's other stuff in the atmosphere besides oxygen. So oftentimes uh, combustion byproducts are produced, but we ignore them when we talk just solely about the combustion reaction that's uh, happening between our hydrocarbon and our oxygen. So typically speaking, when you do see a combustion reaction in chemistry, you'll see it between a hydrocarbon and O2. And that's typically because we're burning hydrocarbons for energy, like gas in your car. It will always, like I said, produce CO2 and H2O, no matter what. So these two products are extremely characteristic of combustion. So if you're ever trying to pick it out or predict products or try and balance some kind of reaction, remember CO2 and H2O always for combustion. Uh, these reactions can be kind of tricky to balance. So sometimes if you're lucky, you can check them out in table I and there are a collection of balanced combustion reactions there for you. Otherwise, it's going to be a little tricky to balance a combustion reaction. Look first to your carbons, then to your hydrogens, and lastly to your oxygens if you're trying to balance those. Second reaction type that we'll talk about here is fermentation. And this is a familiar process in the kitchen, actually, because fermentation is the conversion of sugar into ethanol and carbon dioxide. And again, this is a characteristic product of all fermentation is this ethanol and carbon dioxide. And this is a process that we don't do on our own. We let biology do it for us. So always, always, always for a fermentation reaction, you're going to see the use of some enzyme or yeast because our those biological molecules are very good at converting sugars into an alcohol. And carbon dioxide. And in fact, we do this constantly whenever we make bread or beer or anything that requires the production of alcohol and some kind of gas, right? So in bread, yes, the alcohol bakes off, no worries there, but the carbon dioxide provides the lift that we want to be able to uh, have like nice little bubbly bread that's not all dense and hard and gross. And beer, of course, it makes it alcoholic. And this CO2 is what adds sort of like a little bubbliness to it to prevent um, the alcoholic beverage from being flat. So they're both very important products for both of these processes. And they're all done because of the action of this yeast or um, enzyme. So in this case, you'll always see these two products, again, very characteristic, and you can tell we are balancing our carbons, we're balancing our hydrogens, we're balancing our oxygens, all very predictable, um, but fermentation, you're always going to produce this gas and alcohol as a result of the action of yeast or an enzyme. So the last uh, reaction type that we will talk about here is saponification. And there's not a whole lot to saponification outside of these first four letters. And the reason I want to highlight those is because when you mix together reactants in saponification, you just mix around the first four letters to tell you what it is we're trying to create here. And that's soap. So the whole purpose of saponification is to create soap products. So um, whether you're familiar with Fight Club or just soap in general, um, 
Soap is a result of the reaction between some fat, usually an animal fat, so vegans have to be very careful when they're purchasing soaps. We mix together fat with a very strong base like sodium hydroxide or lye. And then this kind of goes to town on the fat and breaks it down in different ways to produce a product that we can use to help clean dirt off. It kind of surrounds the dirt molecules and allows the water to wash it away. And then this glycerin byproduct. So the whole idea of saponification is using chemicals to produce soap. You don't necessarily need to know any formulas for fats or soaps or glycerin. Um, but you do need to know that saponification is the process that we use to create soap. So hopefully that's a decent step through of those three reaction types. Remember, these are not in your reference tables. You just got to memorize them. So work those flashcards, watch these videos, get these reaction types into your head.